uh, hi, so we have Meera Nayar, who d doesn't need any introduction whatsoever in our midst today. Uh, the filmmaker behind such great titles as Salam Bombay, Mississippi Masala, Monsoon Wedding, The Namesake, Reluctant Fundamentalist. And now uh, we're going to talk to her about BBC One's TV series, uh, A Suitable Boy, adapted from the novel by Vikram Seth of the same title. Uh, the series uh, will be the closing uh, uh, closing show for uh, uh, Toronto Film Festival uh, on September 19th and will be dropping on Netflix. On the top of it, um, Meera has also bagged the TIFF Tribute Award, the Jeff Skoll Award in Impact Media Wednesday, was it? It was uh, Wednesday. Yeah. This week. yeah. So right. big congratulations. And uh, without much ado, uh, I'm just going to start asking questions of you. Uh, homecoming of sort, is it active? Oh, yes, it will be on all the big screens, all six hours, which I'm delighted about because I've always thought of Suitable Boy as really long form cinema, not just for television in that sense. Um, so that's great. And then on the 20th, it's the closing night, which will be in a drive-in with, uh, I think, uh, 200 cars and people in them and a big screen. <laughs> but I'm I'm in my little cocoon here in New York. I'm sadly and, not there. And does that kind of bother you to be kind of uh, in the thick of participation, in the thick of partying remotely? Well, it's it's not bothering because you've got to accept it in a way. But it is sad because uh, film festivals are really the only time that directors meet other directors and actors and just friends. And and that human connect, I miss so much. I, I, all of us do all over the world. But, but Toronto was especially lively because it was really, a, it is a worldly festival. And, uh, and it's from everywhere, you know. So I miss, we all miss that human contact. Yeah, and so you've, it's all Zoom. And you've been consistently associated with TIFF with all your films all the way through, right? Most of your films. Pretty much, yeah, I, I, pretty much, uh, yeah. It was actually a fateful day uh, when Monsoon Wedding pre premiered for the press uh, right after winning the Golden Lion the night before in Venice. We, we flew there and it was showing the next morning, which happened to be September 11th. And oh. people just came out of the screening dancing and the world had changed. So everyone associates... Uh, all the critics here <laughs> associate me and Monsoon Wedding with that fateful morning, uh, which mm -hmm. changed the world in, in mm -hmm. a sense. And yeah, so I've had a long and lovely history with them. Thank mm -hmm. you. You know, so yeah. far as the suitable boy is concerned, how much of is it a home turf for you? Uh, how, how lived in has the novel been for you yourself, you know? Oh, very lived in. You know, I... I read the novel in 1993, soon after it came out. I was waiting for it, basically. I read it twice. I felt like I had, uh, you know, I didn't want to leave my best friend at the end of it. You know, it was that type of feeling. Uh, because Vikram had so extraordinarily captured that Nehruvian India, you know, the moment where we were trying to create our new country after freedom from the British. And, and yet we were so anglicized within ourselves and spoke and dreamt in English and, uh, and, and so on. But he coupled all that with a very kind of astute eye on the politics of, of that time. And I think those politics uh, were, are so prescient in some ways as to today, you know, in our country. And so, but besides that, the wit and the sensuality and the great, you know, sort of depth and layers of friendships uh, in Suitable Boy, you know, between the families, the Khans, the Mehras, the Chatterjees, the Kapoors. It's, it's such a, you know, it's a world I do, well, I do know, uh, but I also longed for. Uh, you know, my parents married in 1951, the year of Suitable Boy story. Uh, they traveled from Punjab to Orissa, where he was uh, an administrative uh, IAS officer, you know, setting up the new capital of Bhubaneswar. It's, that's where I grew up, in those bungalows, you know, with hardly roads and, and a new airport when I was eight years old, you know. It, so that, that kind of idealism of that time has always attracted me. Uh, and I always longed to be born in it, you know. Mm -hmm. So making a suitable boy was like being, like being 
born in it. <laughs> and you know, oddly enough, for someone like say me, you know, looking at it through the perspective of what's happening in the country right now, uh, you know, this whole integrated fabric of the society that you're talking of. Uh, uh, you know, with the you know with the very start of it, that's what hits home. That uh, and a sense of longing and a certain sense of nostalgia, that what yeah. we were and where we have come. Where we have come. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, so did that also ever? But you know, I guess you read it in a different context, and I kind of tend to read it now in a newer zone that we are in. But do you still see kind of you know uh, parallels with uh, with the situation? Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I only came back to a suitable boy. Mm-hmm. I haven't been holding the torch for it for the last twenty-five years, hoping to chalo banai banai. Not at all. Mm-hmm. I moved on to my own work, you know, mm-hmm. as one mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, only when I heard it was being made, perhaps then I said, you know, uh, anything but a gora to make it, man. I need to make it, you know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. So that's what that happened. But uh, of course, it was the fact that the the stories in it, even the story of Babri Masjid, is in absolutely, Sudan, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, the stories in it, um, both in the way of the uh, prescience of of Vikram's vision, you know, in terms of what is happening today, the seeds were planted then, mm-hmm. um, but also to see, as you said, the the great beauty of the syncretic culture that we come from you know the same cloth of hindu and muslim whether it be language or poetry or music or uh, or or, or ada you know in any way and that was actually the biggest magnet for me because saida by uh, played by tabu i mean she, the, her character alone and the poems that she we put to music by the great composer kavita seth who sings them and composed them um you know the poem of uh, dag and meer and 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 ghalib of course you know for me this is the this is the ras you know this is the reason that i i just had to make it you know and mm-hmm. make it also with such great artists you know who deeply imbue what i'm talking about in terms of that syncretic culture you know the mm-hmm. who was the first one cast mm-hmm. in my head and fortunately she just loved it and wanted it immediately mm-hmm. so um, but it's all about that too no finding the spirit in yeah. the act in the who you choose in and who you bring to the party you know mm-hmm. and i swear that was the greatest satisfaction of making mm-hmm. a suitable boy was this great cornucopia of actors mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and pretty much everyone said yes mm-hmm. and uh, and then finding of course tanya to play the lata you know the dew drop the 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 feisty dew drop you know um was also just a, a boon so mm-hmm. my casting directors every day i salute them with dilip shankar and nandini shrikant and karan mali because they just we, we i think we cast for over 18 months mm-hmm. all over india and it's a huge number of characters again yeah. isn't it 100 and 100 and 10 yeah yeah and they're all great and and of course i have old friends and and many of them started with me so they d- can't say no to me so even like vijay raz who's now a big star you know did two scenes for me and were memorable scenes as rashid's father you know mm-hmm. uh, for instance you know or manoj pawa or i mean these, these are just extraordinary actors you know who mm-hmm. who just came and just lit up lit up the screen and and then you know just did that out of just belief and god knows what and i lo- i loved that so that was the real uh, joy you know to wake up every morning and just to see uh, you know shahana goswami just completely sparkle <laughs> without any inhibition and with great skill great performance skill so sab kuch mila ke that that was the real beauty of it for me you know you adapted other works as well but when it comes to this one specifically you know uh, uh what was it that was uh, that made it fun and what was it that made it a nightmare if there was a nightmare also you know well um to be straightforward i came to making suitable boy when it had already been adapted by andrew davies um who's a masterful distiller of great big tomes like war and peace and les misérables and so on so he has a uh, craftsmanship on his side in such a fantastic way and also a great sense of humor and and turn and also the t- television structure of 
you know, the, the cliffhanger. And there's so many in our book that, that it wasn't like, it, it was there, but it had to be still culled. Um, what I, uh, at that time it was eight hours. And frankly, the financing for an eight hour all Asian drama in the Western world is always going to be challenging, you know. Um, I used to joke and say it's the crown in brown. It's as magnificent and as much of a sweep as that series. But the budget was bloody, I don't know, 10% of it. I, I, I don't know the statistics, but it, it's always the case. You don't have what you need when you're not a goner. <laughs> I'm used to it. And I always like show it, you know, I always give it to them. Like, don't see my struggle, baby. But I, this is as... This is as good as anything out there, in the sense, you know, that's my kind of uh, general Punjabiyat. Um, but so, having said that, we had to, you know, distill it further into six hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was deeply involved. And mm -hmm. basically, the, uh, the, I did two, two things. Uh, one was to really make the political interweave with the personal, that it would not just be a marriage story, okay, who, who will she marry, what is the boy, ek, do, teen, you know, it's not only that, mm -hmm. but it is much more interwoven with the politics of then, which is the politics of now, you know. So that balance is what I tried to bring back in. Um, also in the process, bringing back in certain characters that had not been given their time of day. Uh, for instance, like Mrs. Mahesh Kapoor, who played by the most extraordinary actor, uh, Geeta Agarwal, who, you know, who was like the unspoken cornerstone, the foundation of this political family. And, uh, and is really the glue that holds this family together. And when she goes, it's just, um, you know, I, I shouldn't even actually have said that. But uh, so, so, you know, like restoring some weight in, in, in some characters. And sadly, as always is the case, killing someone's, you know, just not having them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, and then secondly, I insisted on language. You know, I, I said, yes, this is a beautiful novel in English, in the English that Indians speak and spoke mm -hmm. at that time. But... Mm -hmm. The, the Saida Bai would not would sing in Urdu. Then why wouldn't she speak in Urdu? You know, or the villagers. You can't go to Rudia and say good morning, father. You know, it just doesn't work. And especially in today day and age, this is not back then. You know, and so that was a discussion with every level. You know, mm -hmm. Vikram thankfully supported me and and uh, said thank you for translating it back, as he put it, uh, especially. Uh, with Saida, but um, but the other, but it was you know for BBC it was quite radical to have their first senior biggest drama show whatever in Urdu of the and Hindustani mm -hmm. mixed with English. Mm -hmm. So I you know but there was a rigorous quota. I couldn't do this much and no more kind of thing. So I really tried to juice that and do it as skillfully as I could and as naturally to the characters as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, well, and, and there was other things. I mean, music for me is my oxygen and music is a huge part of, of the glue, you know, of the, of, of everything that weaves these worlds together. And that even was the a different... incidental songs that you use, you know, yes. even yes. the incidental ones tie in with the, with the, with the larger narrative rather well. Yes. Yes. And this is a very different style for the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said like what is this is this like a bollywood thing or what is these musical interludes and can't we just have her singing over there and then go off somewhere and you know and and i said you know this is not a bollywood style this is like what i do and and this is why i'm doing this you know and and anyway that, i don't want to get into the details of it but but basically it was a, a vocabulary that that was not familiar to them <laughs> Um, but I must say they really came around and they really love it for it, what it is, you know, but um, I think I've told you. Oh, 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 and then I worked very carefully with Vikram directly about getting the balance and the nuance and the love and the complications, but most of it, the friendship, the depth of it, correct between the Hindu and the Muslim uh, sort of characters because I did not want to fall into any traps mm -hmm. of today 
you know ki dekho oh aise hi hai na kyunki wo aise hi hai that type of scene you know mm-hmm. and i really wanted to preempt and make sure that we we really you know got the ras right and got the got the what i wanted to say which was the syncretism really the syncretism again mm-hmm. so yeah so it was careful working but but the structure was sort of given to me that i then worked within mm-hmm. you know you talk of syncretism and then we also see that the society is at a point where the threads which are binding us are also beginning Unraveled. to unravel you know uh, mm-hmm. i mean do, do did you ever feel a sense of regret also uh, you know from then to now and how far we have come uh, you know as a country as a culture as a society you know does the sense of regret also underline it somewhere Uh, you know regret is like um giving in to defeat <laughs> and i sure i i just i'm confronted by it i'm confronted by the unraveling and we all are in a in a such a direct transparent fashion okay whether it be renaming things or whether it be just pretending they didn't exist <laughs> or and of course the 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 sort of more targeted attacks that we see every day you know uh, and so on so regret i don't want to be i don't i i we we cannot be defeated in this you know we have to um persevere and we have to remember who we actually are it's not like it's something else it's within ourselves so the the other day you know i'm studying uh, in in classical music it's my great love and i was studying rag bhairavi and my teacher ali sethi just a great singer and teacher uh, you know told me about how rag bhairavi was influenced deeply with the turkish souls with the with the arya from iran with 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 you know so many influences that then became what is known now as the indian classical rag bhairavi mm-hmm. but it was because delhi was the seat of uh, patronage for all these musicians and roots a thousand years ago and even what we consider our deepest classical music is actually <laughs> born out of the regions coming together and so it is so difficult and mu- to forget that and it must be remembered and celebrated because it's what we are Mira I'm being told that I'm running short of time so just one last query from you yeah. though I could have continued on and on with the questions <laughs> I had in mind but uh, you know uh, the, the 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 series started off on BBC with one episode you know yeah, per uh, day show per, per day yeah yeah then uh, now like you said that there will be this uh, you know a screening at a go in tiff and yeah. uh, 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 and then it will drop all together in Yeah. Uh, on netflix you know where most of us are going to binge watch it uh, mm-hmm. as a filmmaker uh, you know what do you make of this because with each viewing the experience is very different, different. isn't it you know yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, how would you ideally want this to be seen well ideally i would think that actually should be seen on a big screen at once would be great you know uh, but the big screen can be at home because many people have yeah. those screens you know mm-hmm. um that's what i would say it's like a, it's like i just want to transport you you know take you on this journey you know and uh, I, i kind of was in I, although i'm living here in new york so i did not see it on television <laughs> it's so bizarre it opened and i just like here and then of course i got a lot of thing text and yevo but i didn't have the experience of seeing it you know mm-hmm. and it's strange for me the experience of television because it's so disembodied you know from the filmmaker in me you know i want to feel the audience and because of covid even in the natural like sort of we did uh, in the editing process we didn't have people come in we didn't have previews we didn't have test screenings kuch nahi you know a few friends but uh, like digitally you know so that all was quite strange and different uh but i think we preserved it and um you know so that's but there was something interesting in the bbc method of every sunday one hour that the anticipation i found grew a lot and that was very interesting and yeah. attractive you know um on the other side the piracy that obviously proliferated in the mm. 
pretty much the world um made me very concerned you know also in the kaise halat mein dekh rahe hain log you know i just feel i felt like oh this is really a sensual show you know this is really a visual kind of i think uh, uh, kind of delight and and also it's quite uh, it's quite sweeping and it needs to be given at least that much place you know ke choti si post office mein mai dekho or not on the iphone and but a lot of people do that and that's tough on me yeah. you really do yeah, yeah. so i don't know i just uh, want to serve it up and and hope people will Mm. eat it <laughs> they surely will thanks so much for joining us meera i wish we could have carried on further lots to Me ask too. you but maybe another time then to receive instant updates on all videos from the wire click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon pay to support independent journalism click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay